start joining. So before we really go into the LinkedIn tutorial, uh, I just want to talk about what LinkedIn is kind of in itself. So it is a lot similar to Facebook. If a lot of you are using that still, I don't know how popular it is anymore, but it's very similar as a social network and the way that the website and the app are set up. Um, but it is more professional. So a lot of the funny memes or jokes or videos that you might share on Facebook, you wouldn't necessarily share on LinkedIn. So it is very professional, but because it is a social media, it has a little bit more of a laid back feel. So you can still use emojis and some shorthand, but you don't want that to be your entire profile. So for today's tutorial, I'll go through very quickly how to sign up for an account for anyone who doesn't have one already. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what your home page looks like and go through how to navigate the website itself. And then we'll talk about our profile pictures, uh, how to write your descriptions and what to include in your uh, work experience and your skill set. And then a little bit about our connections and networks and how we can build on our pre existing skills. So, well, jump right in here. So if everyone wants to on their phone, pull up the app or on your laptop, whatever you're using, just go to linkedin.com. And if you have an account, feel free to sign in. If you don't yet, take a minute to sign up for your account. It's free, it's great to have. Um, so you'll put in your first name, last name, email, and a password. Um, you want your password to be probably different than all your other ones, but I know everyone has their, their go-to password that they use for just about everything when they change one or two letters or numbers. So take a minute to get that set up if you don't have one already. And if you do have an account, maybe take a second to download the app onto your phone or your tablet it is really nice to just have to be able to access it in a little bit more of a convenient way. And also, just like all of my workshops before, if I'm speaking too fast, or you need me to go back on a slide or cover anything, or if you have any questions at any point, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away or send the message in the chat, and I'm more than happy to go back and answer them. So from there, you'll get a prompt that looks something like this. Um, if you're in Canada, you want to put Canada as your country, even if maybe you're coming to Canada very shortly, you might want to do that just to start getting a little bit more of a Canadian news feed and things like that. Um, for your postal code, you can use the one for Renison University College if that's where you're going to be living, if you're going to be around Waterloo. That's N2L3G4. Um, are you a student? I think all of you will say yes. Um, if you're in college or university, um, if you're an I-based or IEFAS student, you can put the University of Waterloo if you already have your acceptance or your offer from them. Um, if not, then you can put Renison University College because you're studying with us right now. And then you'll put in your start year, which for most of you will probably be this year. If you're an IE class or two plus two student, you can put whatever year you actually started your program. And the end year or expected end year. So that'll probably be five or six years, or sorry, four or five years from now. And uh, that, so that would go from 2021 up until 2025 or 2026. Uh, it just depends if you are in a co-op program or a regular stream at Waterloo. The regular stream only takes four years, but co-op you'll be in for five. 
And then on the next page, uh, LinkedIn is going to ask you some variation of what are you most interested in? This is basically for their own sake to understand why people are using their app, but it also gives them a sense of what they want to be sharing with you. So what you want to get out of using their app or their website. So either staying up to date in your industry, finding a job if you're on the search for something new, uh, keeping in touch with your contacts. So maybe friends that you've made at old jobs or old employers that you have, friends from school even, um, building your professional network. So expanding from those friends and that network you already have to uh, learn some new things or connect with newer people outside of your regular realm or not sure yet and you're open. So you can choose that one if the other uh, ideas don't really fall into what you want to use the app for. And then they are going to send you a confirmation email. Just take a second to go and check your email and accept that just to really confirm that you are an actual person and a student and not a robot. So here is kind of what your homepage might look like. Um, it'll look very similar to this, but there are frequent changes to the website. So you might see something that looks a little bit different when you're looking at your own profile right now, but overall it'll be the same idea where you have your news feed down the center, um, some news articles or things that you might be interested in down the right. At the top, you have your navigation bar. So home, your network, jobs, messaging, notifications, and your own profile. Um, if you're very new to LinkedIn, then it'll probably give you some options at the very top for uh, adding to your profile, new experiences, and new jobs that you've been working, building your network. So it'll give you suggestions or uh, prompts to add new people, build your friends list, and stay in the know so you can start following uh, certain topics or places or companies that you're interested in. And then you can stay up to date on things that they're doing. So I'm going to stop my share for two seconds and show you what my LinkedIn looks like. Just have to go back there. So here is kind of what my news feed is here. So you see I can add a post with photos, videos, events, things like that. Um, you get all of the different news articles here. It'll give you ideas on what courses you might like to take, and we can talk about that a little bit more. It'll show you all of the pages that you're following and the new things that they're sharing. Um, so I follow Justin Trudeau, and so does my friend Abigail, so I get uh, information about him. Somewhere along the lines, it'll have uh, job recommendations for you that you can quickly scroll through and see there. And then you can follow some hashtags that you're interested in. So I right now only follow sustainability, but I might wanna add new Waterloo alumni because I am one. I'm going to go back to the slides here. Wherever they are. I always hate going back and forth between slides and Zoom. It's never an easy transition. So once you have your profile set up and you wanna start going through and making it look super professional, this might be the point where most of you are at if you already had your profile made but haven't really had the chance to play around with it and add important things. So it'll prompt you to add a photo, uh, add some of your experience. So this is going to be your, your job experience. 
add skills. So a lot of these will look like the keywords that we look for in job descriptions or various skills that we've typed up on the way through computer programming or things that we've learned in our courses. Add your volunteering experience. So if you were an Ontario high school student and you had to complete 40 hours of community service in order to graduate, that's all your volunteering experience that you can add there. If you were on student councils or your IBASE rep, things like that, you can always add those as well. And then adding your summary. So this is a summary of you to highlight your experiences and interests. Add a language. So many of you are fortunate enough to be multilingual. So that's a really great asset to have on your profile. Very many companies are looking for people who can speak more than one language. It's a really great one to have. And then add honors and awards. So any awards that you may be getting from your school, if you just graduated from high school and you received maybe a student council award or an English award, those are great to add. If you're getting any scholarships or you're chosen for any, always keep those up to date too. Those look really great on your profile. We're going to talk about our profile pictures really quick. So LinkedIn members who have a profile photo get 12 times more views than those without a picture. And this is mostly because uh, if your profile doesn't have a photo, a lot of people will assume that it's a robot or a catfish. So someone pretending to be someone they're not. So we wanna make sure that we have a picture that really captures who we are. So when you're choosing your profile photo, First of all, you want to make sure that it's a picture of you. You don't want it to be anyone else. You don't want it to have a bunch of other people. You don't want it to be a cartoon. So you want a photo of you that is high quality, shows you by yourself, dressed professionally, facing forward and smiling. So if you have pictures of you and your friends at the beach, that's probably not the best picture to be sharing um, or pictures with you out drinking with friends, not necessarily what they're looking for, but something professional, maybe a suit or a blazer facing forward and giving a nice smile. It has also been shown that profiles with people who are smiling in their photo get more connections and more views than people who don't just because it's more welcoming and more personable. And like always, nothing inappropriate. So basically, if you don't want it to be shared all across the news and you wouldn't be happy with that photo representing you on the cover of a newspaper, then we maybe don't want to be sharing it on our LinkedIn. Some good locations for photos when you're on campus are the Engineering 5 pedestrian, pedestrian bridge. You will notice a lot of you Waterloo students have this in their profile photo or their LinkedIn photo. Um, I know um, our student experience coordinator, Ceci, if you look at her headshot on our meetups page, that was taken in the E5 pedestrian bridge. Peggy Hall School of Accountancy also has a really nice architecture to it. So a lot of people like to take their pictures there. And just as a fun fact, um, the photography club at U Waterloo also does uh, LinkedIn profile pictures. So if you follow their Facebook or their Instagram, you should be able to, like they'll post notifications for when they're doing these. And I'm pretty sure they're free and you can just sign up for a time slot and they will get you some really nice professional looking headshots. I just need to take a quick drink. So when you're choosing your profile, like we said, you want to be looking professional. So a few of these people already have some pictures that we think are perfect for a LinkedIn profile. So we have uh, this gentleman in the middle with his suit, the two girls in the top and bottom corner with their blazers on smiling, looking at the camera, being professional. 
Uh, this middle one here actually is also in the Engineering 5 uh, walkway. So just so you're, you know it does look very nice and very professional. But you might be thinking that these other pictures don't quite fit that idea of what a professional LinkedIn photo might look like. So you might be looking at the lady in the top left here who looks like she's maybe coming back from a backpacking trip, but she could also be working as a geologist or an ecologist and spends a lot of time outside with her backpack and her warm sweaters and things like that. And that's just how she looks when she goes to work. So that works for her professional field. We also have this gentleman in the bottom center here, and he is wearing his big coveralls, hard hat, all that jazz. But if he works for maybe an engineering company or something like that, he's maybe a construction worker, that makes sense for what he is doing and the jobs that he's looking for. And over on the bottom right here, uh, this gentleman might be working in something like graphic design or for a photography company. So he wants something that is going to accentuate that and look a little bit more professional, but also work towards his field. I know doing things like that actually does work. I have had a friend who made connections through LinkedIn and changed his entire profile to fit the job that he was looking for with an outdoor clothing company and ended up getting a contract position and now works full time for the company. So changing your profile and maneuvering it to make it work for what you're looking for or the jobs that you want to be a part of really does help and it shows employers that that is something that you're very interested in and very passionate about as well. So I'll also talk about our headline. So the headline goes at the very top of your profile, and it's just a short, memorable slogan about you. So a slogan is just a brief description that describes you to a recruiter or a hiring manager or other members of your network. So you want it to be short, a sentence or less even, and just tells you exactly what you're doing and describes who you are and what your role is. So some examples of that are, sorry, <laughs> an EAP student seeking admission to the University of Waterloo. Very short, explains who they are as a person. So they're a student and what they're looking for. They're seeking admission to the University of Waterloo. So that helps. Um, another one would be an arts and business student at the University of Waterloo. So you're a student already studying in the University of Waterloo. What you're doing is arts and business. So it's easy, tells employers what you're doing and gives them a bit of an insight on where you are and what goals you might have. Another would be software developer at TD Innovation Lab. So TD is a big Canadian bank. So they're working as a developer for that company. And then events director at Engineers Without Borders Waterloo Chapter. Like saying where exactly they're located and what they're doing with that company. So I'm going to share uh, one of the greatest LinkedIn profiles that I think we have to offer. A lot of you are probably very familiar with Ryan Connell and his presence on social media. If you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, I know most of you are in the WeChat and WhatsApp groups. Ryan makes all that magic happen and he has learned to navigate social media better than I think anyone else I have ever met. So I will share his profile with all of you. Oops, that's the wrong one. Once again, I need just very easy transitions. They can never be easy for me. So, so 
back to the top here. Turn it back to go away. So here is Ryan Connell. So on his profile, we can see right here, his, uh, that's his headline there, Manager of Student Experience at Renison University College. You can see this one is where he's working at Renison. And uh, these are both also his schools that he has graduated from. So he was in social development studies at Renison and also got his master's of education from Wilfrid Laurier. And then when we scroll down here, uh, it will highlight things that both of you and this connection have done. So for me, it tells me that Ryan and I both worked for Renison University College, and we both studied at the University of Waterloo. I also see his about section. So it's mainly two to three sentences that just sort of narrow down who you are and gives them an idea. So you typically talk about uh, what your profile, I'm sorry, not your profile, your current job position or student position is, um, something that you've studied, something that you're passionate about, and some skills. So Ryan has tons of experience in his belt. So he's worked for Renison for many years, also for the University of Waterloo. The fun thing about your descriptions on your experience on LinkedIn is that it doesn't have to be as short and compact as your resume. So although you might use your resume as a jumping off point to create your LinkedIn profile, you also want to be sure to adapt and uh, add to what you're saying about what your tasks were at the job. So here for Ryan, all of these points would only be one or two points or two or three points on his actual resume, but he's able to go a lot more in depth on his real profile. Same with all his past experiences there, education. So everything that you've done will go there as well. Um, any licenses and certifications you have, you want to add and volunteer experience. So that will look very similar to what you have for your job experience. You just might not put quite as much information unless you worked or volunteered for that company for quite a while. And I'll show you my profile as well. It's definitely not as well done as Ryan's, but it's still pretty good. So we have the profile picture. I definitely need to update mine because mine A isn't very clear and B is way too busy. So even though we said that we don't wanna have you and another person in your profile picture, you also don't want something like this where everything else in the picture is so distracting that you can't even tell who you are or what you look like. Um, we also get to add a header, try to make it kind of match with your profile theme. Mine is from Amsterdam, so I like to promote kind of that I like to travel and have intercultural experiences because that's the field that I want to work in. Um, another thing, I don't know how much your instructors or anyone has mentioned this to you or how familiar with, every, with it everyone is. But it's become very common to add in your pronouns to your uh, social media or your LinkedIn profile. That way people know exactly how to address you. Because you can't always tell by someone's name and it does make for a more inclusive environment for LGBT plus uh, individuals or transgender individuals who uh, might have uh, problems like navigating these things or folks who are non-binary or gender fluid. So we like to just put our pronouns on our profile as well, just so that people are aware and they know exactly how to address you. So when we scroll down on your dashboard, you'll see something like this. So you can see who's viewed your profile, how many posts 
views you've received, if you've appeared in any searches recently. To go more in depth in those things, you will have to pay for LinkedIn Premium. But it is kind of neat just to see how often you're showing up. And it will also give you, um, on the app at least, a graph to show how popular you have been in a certain amount of time. So that's really fun to see. Um, but yeah, the same, have my about section with who I am. So I'm Waterloo and Lum. Uh, I have years ex of experience working with English language learners in a higher education setting. I list a few of my best skills and uh, what my degree was in university. So very short and to the point, and employers can get an idea of who I am. I have yet to add in my descriptions for my job experience. So we're working on that. Don't slack on this the way that I have, but it is very good to have. Education as well. So I don't have too many degrees or anything. So I've also included my high school as well, just to show that I have completed that. If you're fresh out of high school or it feels relevant to you to add, feel free to do that too. Um, also licenses and certifications. Right now I only have one. So my smart serve says that I am allowed to serve alcohol in Ontario, things like that. All of my volunteer experience. And this includes all the experience that I've received or taken part of as a student at Waterloo. Um, again, if you did your 40 hours in high school, be sure to add those because employers will love to see how much you did or where you spent your time doing those hours. And another fun one is the skills and endorsements. So in your skill set, you want to add things that might show up as keywords within a job description. So things like leadership, teamwork, public speaking, but you'll also have your industry knowledge and your uh, tools and technologies and then interpersonal skills. So these are gonna be things like uh, for me is event management and event planning. Um, for a lot of you, you'll want to have Microsoft Office, Google Suite. Um, you might have uh, things like Java, Adobe, uh, Linux and stuff like that to just add to your profile. If you're not super familiar with them or you want to see if you actually know enough to add it to your profile, you can always take a skills quiz. So through that, can I use my high school, gradu high school graduation pick as my profile pick? That's a really good question. Absolutely. I don't see why not. I think that showing a graduation photo, especially if you're just starting and you don't have a professional headshot yet, is a really great way to start. So using something like that, that shows that you are in academia and working towards something really good to use. Definitely. Thank you for your question. So with your, after you take your skills quiz, then it will allow you to add certain skills to your profile. Um, but you can also see here that my friend Emily has given me an endorsement for my leadership skill. On other people's accounts, you can go through and if you've maybe worked with them on a group project or you've worked with them in a different job or something, you can go through and say, oh yeah, Allison is a great leader. I can endorse her. And it's kind of like a plus one on it. And that way other people, when they look at your friend's profiles or when your friends come back to yours, they can see that, oh, someone else is saying that, yes, this person can do this skill. So even taking the time to talk to your friends that you've made through iBase and IEFAS and work with them on maybe group projects or an iBase rep, going through each other's profiles and giving each other these endorsements can really help one another to build their connections and build their profile. Um, you can also add in some accomplishments. So this is where any of your language skills will go. And at the bottom, you'll see all of your interests. So I only have a handful here, but you add anything that you're interested in and it can be anything from certain uh, brands that you enjoy 
the celebrities and public figures or influencers that you like to follow. And all of that will show up at the bottom. So these are also kind of nice for employers to see because they can get more of an idea about who you are as an individual apart from all of your professional uh, settings and things like that that you've already shown them on the rest of your profile. So they get to know you a little bit more deeper. So we'll come on back to the slideshow. Somehow there are multiple open and I don't understand that. Yeah, on your profile, you should also take the time to change your, uh, your link. So if you go through your profile to where it says me in the top corner, or if you just go right onto your profile from the app. Actually, I don't think you can change this from the app. So on your desktop, you gotta see it from there. So you'll click view profile. And then you're going to look up in the top right corner of where all of your information is and click that little pencil icon beside your contact and personal information. So sometimes it'll be up here. Uh, if you're on a certain desktop, it might be down on the right hand side. And then from there, you're going to edit your contact information. And you'll see your LinkedIn link at the very top there for your profile URL. You want to click on the little arrow, it might be a box arrow that's coming out from it. But when you click on that, you'll come to a second screen with a smaller a box that has your edit public public profile URL and click that pencil icon there. And then you can shorten up your LinkedIn uh, URL. So you might want to change it because it should have probably your name and a bunch of different numbers. You should at least take out the numbers and make it maybe just your first name dot last name, first name, last name, last name, first name, just something easy to remember and short and easy to share on your resume or on other job applications. So for me, mine just says it would be linkedin.com slash in slash Allison dash Marlowe. So it's very easy to remember. It's just my name. I can quickly write that down or copy it into my resume anytime that I need to use it. So if you have it open, feel free to go through and uh, change that as well right now. So on to our connections. So these are a really big part of your LinkedIn profile. To start off, you really do just want to connect with people that you already know. So these are called your network or my network. So one way that you can add people is by entering your email or maybe your phone number, and it will take all of your contacts from your email and automatically search through them and send a connection request. This isn't always a great idea just because you might have an email contact you have only messaged maybe one time in your life. It's just Tony from the bank. And you don't really know Tony from the bank. So you don't always want to have him on your profile when you could be adding people that you already know, people who have worked with you, who have been to class with you and things like that. So it might just be a lot easier or make more sense to add people by name who you do know, especially to start off. So under my network, it should give you a list of people that you may know, and these will go off of from your schooling background, any past jobs you might have, past volunteering experience. It'll give you suggestions based on that or based on connections that you already have. So when you look at a connection, you'll see that uh, beside their name, they'll have either a first, second, or third on there. So your first connections are people that you have already connected with through LinkedIn. Your second connections 
are, it's like a friend of a friend. So you have a mutual connection, but you and that person are not connected. And third connections are people who you have absolutely no connection with whatsoever. They are just random. Maybe you've just met them and they don't have any mutuals with you, something like that. So that could be pretty much anyone on the app. So yeah, it'll give you a lot of suggestions based on what you currently have. So you just have to go through and decide if those are people that you want on your profile, or you can just search the names of anyone that you would like. You can also feel free to start off by adding myself, Ryan, Ceci, Alex Dalton, your peer leaders if you want to. A lot of us will be more than happy to connect with you and help you start building your profile. So through the app, you can also work on your networking skills. So you can message your connections on your home screen. You can go through and see some updates about your connections. So what they're doing at their jobs, maybe they got a new job. Um, whenever your connections do get new jobs, uh, LinkedIn will also send you a notification explain it, telling you that. So it's always nice to uh, go in and send them a congratulations on maybe a work anniversary or a new job. And just like Facebook, like I showed you earlier, you can share an update or upload a photo. But again, we're not looking for your favorite SpongeBob meme at this particular moment, unless you can somehow relate that back to your job and your networking. <laughs> but for the most part, we're looking for things more like blog posts, news articles, maybe something interesting that you're doing with your class or in your studies. So maybe when you're starting your engineering classes, you will be working on a really cool project with robots and it's your first time doing it. Or maybe you're uh, working on an app that you would like to share with the world. So doing things like that and sharing that with all of your friends and your connections, and then they can share that further to help you reach a larger audience. You can also publish a post that looks like a blog post that any anyone can read and find lots of interesting pieces that have been written by different influencers. So these aren't people doing TikTok dances or you know, selling beauty supplies, but they're going to be more CEOs and co-founders and editors who have a bigger influence on their own company and on like the business world. So these are going to be people more like Elon Musk who have this crazy amount of uh, jobs that they do and things that they share to their wider network. So I'm sure a lot of you have already been on your LinkedIn, hopefully following along, but feel free to go on to linkedin.com and start building your profile. And hopefully you can have a bit of luck with that. Again, ask any questions if you are going through that and you can maybe share screens or something and help you through it. So finally, we're just gonna talk about if you're looking for jobs. So once you fill out most of your profile, then LinkedIn will automatically recommend local jobs based on your skills and location. So when you go to your jobs, you can fill out your preferences, including the location. So if you want to look in your home city or cities close to you, or maybe you're planning on going abroad, like coming to Canada or moving out somewhere in Europe or something, you can change your location to it, where you want to be in the world, company size. Is it possible to find a co-op job using LinkedIn? I think for your undergrad, the only co-ops that are accepted by the university are ones that have been found through Waterloo Works. So they have to be specifically posted in Waterloo Works and uh, applied for and received through that platform. It is possible to find uh, different companies that you're interested in through LinkedIn and maybe make connections with 
a manager or a hiring director from there, connect with them. And then later on, when you're applying for co-op positions through Waterloo Works, they'll look at your name on their sheets and remember that, oh, I had a great conversation with the student on LinkedIn. I really want to see where they want to go. So I'll give them an interview through Waterloo Works. Does that make sense? Yeah, that is a really great question. LinkedIn will work a little bit better for finding jobs outside of co-op. So things like uh, part-time jobs, even they have a lot of postings for those. I can show you what I get in mine as a graduate, um, but yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can find on there, but sadly co-op is not one of them. But yeah, so under your jobs, you can also choose your company size. So some people wanna work for a really big company that's well known like Google or Facebook. Others want a, a smaller company, maybe a startup that they can have a little more insight in. And then also your industry or field. So this might be um, what you've studied in school or it could be just a personal hobby or interest that you wanted to try out. Or even like I said, uh, if you're looking for a part-time job, you can start looking for sales associate jobs or kitchen work or things like that, that can be easy to do while you're also studying. And then you can click on the jobs that you are interested in and follow the employer's instructions to apply. Let's see what's next here. So I'll finish up the slides and then I'll go back to my profile and show you just what the jobs look like there. And yeah, if you have any other questions, I can stick around for a little bit longer as well. So when you're building your skill set, uh, LinkedIn has a service called LinkedIn Learning, where you can do online courses to build job related skills. So when you complete a course, you can post an e certificate of completion to your LinkedIn profile. And as a U Waterloo student, you will all have free access to LinkedIn Learning as a service. If you're not, for whatever reason, then you can sign up for a free trial and test out a handful of courses that way. So you'll go on to linkedin.com slash learning and click sign in. Um, on the sign in page, click sign in with your organization and then select uh, U Waterloo and enter your U Waterloo email address and your what I am credentials. And that will allow you to get in with the free learning. So aside from that, there are lots of other organizations that offer online courses. Some of them are free and some have an associated cost with them. So a lot of them will do a bunch of different subject areas that are available for studying, like programming, science, communication. Would you recommend international students with their English proficiency test scores on LinkedIn. So if you have already passed your uh, English test, if you did super well on it or something like that, then that might not be a bad idea. You will have the chance to add in your English as a second language to your profile and add how proficient you are in it. So that might be where that would go but I don't think adding the exact test score unless you somehow got perfect on it would be the best idea. But even just adding in that you completed iBase or IEFAS to your profile, that way they know you have extensive English practice and skills associated with that, that might be a good idea. Does that make sense? Perfect. So some online uh, course providers are things like Coursera. Uh, these are courses from universities worldwide. It does come with a small fee for each course that you want to do, but it'll give you a certificate at the end and you can share that to your profile. And those are really great to build some skill sets as well. The Open University is a UK based online university and MIT Open Courseware has free materials from uh, MIT. So these are all really cool and we want to be sure that we're continuing to learn and sharing what we're learning and how we're learning it through all of our platforms. 
That way, all of our employers or people who are looking at our skills and resumes can see that we're still trying to learn and trying to gain as much information and industry knowledge as possible. So it's a really great way to show that you're passionate about what you're doing and that you have what we call a growth mindset. So you always want to be striving for something more and be working towards being better and being a better professional. So that's it for the presentation there. I can go back, so we just have a couple more minutes. So I'll just go back to my profile on LinkedIn and show you kind of what the jobs look like. And then we can look at LinkedIn learning if you'd like. So in the job bar here, uh, we can see all of the different things that I'm looking for in a, a job. So maybe I'm looking for a job similar to mine. So something like a student advisor, things like that. Um, these are the ones that are recommended to me based on my profile and search history. So it's going through all the jobs that I already have listed on my profile, my skill set, um, jobs that I've already looked for. It is really neat that it will tell you how many of alumni of your company work there. If you have any connections, you also work for this company. Even if you have a second or third connection, I might tell you that as well. That way, if you know someone who's in, a, in the field already or in that company, you can always reach out to them and ask how it is, if they like it, get some insight on what the job would be like. So that's always good to do. Um, so yeah, you can see lots of different things. I get a lot of child and youth worker uh, positions because my degree program was social development studies. So it's very similar to a social work role. Um, Things like data entry is really big because I have uh, taken stats classes and things like that. Yeah, I could go through and just look at specifically student advisor jobs and it'll tell me all of the ones that are available right now all across the country. So it's really good to just go through and see. Um, it'll tell you everything that you need to know about the job, so your duties and responsibilities. It's really just like a regular job description. It goes through your qualifications, the working conditions that you would have. A lot of times it will show you the pay range or the salary that you'll be getting either for the year or your hourly rate. Uh, highlights, so it'll highlight people who have also studied at Waterloo or in your school to tell you how your connections have liked it or where they are. And yeah, so you can apply on their company website and follow their instructions that way. Or if you're not quite ready, you can always save the job for later and it'll show up in your save jobs bar. You can see where those will be located. It normally just pops up or there's a little uh, list that you can go through. And then those are all the jobs that I've saved. Most of them I don't think are actually available anymore. But yeah. Uh, and then show your name. You can go to linkedin.com slash learning. And it'll log you in with your LinkedIn account or you, of course through your U Waterloo account. And then you can just scroll through and see a bunch of different courses that they offer. So you can find things that are a little more similar to your field. So something maybe like business analysis, analysis foundations. Uh, maybe you want to work on your leadership skills or data analysis. If you're new to social media and maybe you're taking on a role that takes a lot of social media time, you can go through and do a quick course on that. And then again, like all of these show up on your profile. Once you're finished, you get a little certificate saying, hey, I learned a little bit more about this. Here are the skills that I've gained. And you can talk about it within your interviews and add it to your skill set. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for you. 
Does anyone have any other questions at all? No, no question. Like, how do you guys like using LinkedIn? Have you done much with it before? Do you have many connections? What have you been using your LinkedIn for so far? Now for me, I've mostly used it to keep up with, oh, it was interesting uh, to see the information and job opportunity in LinkedIn. Awesome. That's really great. Have you been uh, looking through that a lot? I know they post so many jobs all the time. It can be very hard to keep up with what there is and maybe what you want, but it is really great to see. Yeah, I like to use it to keep up with friends that I've made internationally. General question, yeah. Does your volunteer, oh, sorry, does your work and volunteer experience need to be related to a job that you are really looking for or can it just be general? Definitely just general. So when you're creating your profile, you want to have as much of your experience as you can just listed on your profile. When you're applying to jobs individually, and you have your resume, you wanna cut that down to what's more relevant or highlight skills that you've gained from those, uh, those experiences that are most relevant to the job that you're applying to. But your profile is more like a CV, which outlines every experience that you've possibly done and all the skills that you've acquired from them. Does that make sense? Your account has, okay, awesome. Your account has been restricted. How can I solve this problem? Um, did you ever um, accept your email verification? So without that, it yes. might just- yeah. I, I um, registered for my account several days ago and I changed some information on it. Uh, like. Um, I changed my URL yesterday, but today when I tried to log into my account, it said that I provide some uh, mistake information, but I didn't um, remember what mistake information I, ha I have. Um, the easiest right way, I think, to get back into an account like that might be to just say that you have forgotten your password, and then it will send you a password reset and you'll just have to put in a new one and then uh, log in with the same email that you received your new password from and it should let you in that way, hopefully. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And does anyone else have any other questions? We've got a couple more minutes here. And there's no such thing as a dumb question, first of all. Do we get free LinkedIn premium service from the university? I don't believe so. Um, I know through LinkedIn, you're able to get a free trial of LinkedIn premium, but I don't think we get the actual service for free from the university. You do, however, get the LinkedIn learning for free with you, Waterloo. I wish we had premium service though, <laughs> because that would make this a lot more fun. Will the employers check my LinkedIn? So if you, uh, sometimes on your application, your employers will ask for um, any social media that you would like to share with them. Maybe you have a blog or a Twitter page that's very successful, or you would share your LinkedIn in that, uh, in that box. So in that case, they absolutely will check your LinkedIn. 
um, for the most part, some of them will just do it to see if you're active on it, to make sure that you're um, keeping your profile up to date. So every time that you update your, um, what's that called? Every time you update your resume, you want to also make sure you're updating your LinkedIn with the same um, experiences in the same order. But other than that, it's really up to the employer. So sometimes they absolutely will. So it's best to just make sure that your profile is up to date and ready to go in case they do, but not all of them are going to. Can I share my Instagram if I have good pictures? If you are sharing your photography page, probably, yeah, that makes sense. But um, if photography isn't really something that is a part of your job course or things that you want to get into, it's not always the best idea. Um, if you're, you just want to share your Instagram to share it, then maybe not. It's more for if you have like a professional base um, Instagram or like social media page, then those are the ones that you would want to share. Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. Does anyone have any others? How to let the LinkedIn Learning. Yeah, so when you go onto LinkedIn Learning, um, be signed out of your LinkedIn account, first of all, and then uh, click the sign in, what is it called? Sign in with an institution, I think is the option that it gives you. And then you'll just type in University of Waterloo or it should give you the option for it. And then uh, you'll log in with your U Waterloo email or what I am credentials. No problem. Thanks. Any other questions at all, guys? This has been really great, by the way. I love all the participation and all of the questions. These are really great to see. I'm glad that you've all gotten something out of this. I'll hang out for one or two more minutes, but if you don't have any questions or uh, nothing to say here, feel free to email me, message me on WeChat or WhatsApp if you do come up with anything. Also feel free to send me a connection if you want to on LinkedIn, I'm more than happy to get that started for you guys and get your networks growing. So other than that, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you have a really great day or night, depending on where you are in the world. And I'll see you all very soon, I hope.